Hi guys, it's Ty and welcome back to my channel. So today I'm doing another recent reads, but unfortunately a lot of these books that I'm going to be talking about today, I felt very mid about. They just weren't as good as I was expecting and hoping them to be. Two of them I DNF'd and then one of them I did rate four stars, but I'm starting to wonder if I rated it too high because I've already forgotten some of the details within that book. So there's that, but we will go ahead and get started. So the first book that I want to talk about is The Dragon Republic by R.F. Kuang. This is adult fantasy. It is the second book in the Poppy War series and I DNF'd this. I'm not going to say much about the plot because it is the second book in the series, but I was just very bored with the story. I DNF'd it about 300 pages in, so I did give it a fair and honest try. I was not the biggest fan of The Poppy War. I thought it was fine. I enjoyed it well enough. There were things that I liked, things that I didn't like. I was very hesitant to go into this because I wasn't sure if it was going to live up to the hype for me, especially with how I felt about The Poppy War. And it gave me exactly what I thought it was going to give and that was nothing. So like I said, I was very bored. In the beginning of this, like the first 100 pages, I was enjoying it. I did mention that in one of my reading vlogs where I said that I was enjoying it and I was enjoying Ren as a character, but something happened. At a certain point, Ren was very frustrating to me because one point she would be okay with trying to be the leader and lead her group but then in another instance she was okay with you know letting other people lead and take charge and it was just us watching her go back and forth with whether or not she was ready to be a leader and I just got frustrated with her. It felt like in this story a lot was happening but nothing was happening at the same time. I don't know if it was the pacing, I just don't know if I just wasn't into the story from the from the beginning or what it was but this just did not work for me and I had to DNF it. So then we have Happiness Falls by Angie Kim. This is the same author that wrote the book uh, Miracle Creek that was really popular not too long ago. I do have the book, I haven't read it yet. Um, it might have just got bumped down further on my TBR after this, but we'll get into it. Um, but this is a literary fiction with some mystery thrown in there. So at the beginning of this, we are following our main character, Mia. And her dad and her younger brother, her younger brother actually has Engelman syndrome and I believe he's autistic. They go on a walk. A few hours later, only the brother returns and now the family is trying to figure out what happened to the father. I also DNF this book. It just was not working for me. I only got 40 pages in. That is unusual for me because I will give a book well more than 40 pages before I DNF it, but I just could not with this. The main character, Mia, was really frustrating to read from and listen from because I was listening to this on an audiobook, and she would just go off on these random tangents. She would just keep jumping back and forth between different subjects, and it just got really confusing at certain points trying to keep up with what she was talking about. Not only that, but this book has footnotes, and I've said it before, I am not a fan of footnotes, especially if they are not adding anything to the story. If they're not providing me any additional information about what is going on, I don't understand why we have footnotes. And it was very distracting. It just kept taking me out of the story every time we went to the footnote because then I'm trying to really dig deep and figure out why we needed this footnote and then we would continue on with the story and it was just very frustrating and I just could not get through it. Now, a lot of people have been reading this. A lot of people have been enjoying it. So take what I'm saying with a grain of salt. This just did not work for me. So I did have to. So then we have The True Love Experiment by the author duo Christina Lauren. This is a adult romance. It is a companion book to their other one, The Soulmate Equation, which I have read and for the most part enjoyed. But this one follows our main character, Fizzy. She is a best-selling romance writer, but at the beginning of this, she is struggling with writer's block. Then we have the other main character, Connor, who uh, films documentaries, like that's his passion. But at his company that he works at, they're really struggling and they want to have like really big ratings for something. So they decide that he is going to be in charge of a reality dating show that they are creating. So now he has to go out and figure out who's gonna be the main girl. He comes across Fizzy and has to convince her to be a part of this reality dating show. She reluctantly agrees and says she will only do it if they follow 
her uh, demands and part of those demands was that every guy that they put on this reality dating show had to fall under specific tropes so there had to be like the nerd um the one that got away i think even there was like a trope to be for some for one of them to be a vampire so they actually was able to fulfill all of her demands and she is now a part of the show so before the show starts like before they start filming she and connor start to spend all of this time together um they start going to like different events together they start going on these little dates because they are trying to find their joy and so because they're spending all this time together they start to develop feelings which proves to be pretty difficult because now once the show starts to film connor is the executive producer so he has to be on set and he has to watch fizzy date all of these other guys which is hard for him and it's also hard for her so we are just watching them as they are trying to figure out what they're going to do with their feelings for each other so i rated this one three stars i didn't quite enjoy it as much as i enjoyed that other book that i mentioned the soulmate equation i like the characters in that book more than i like the characters in this one so i liked anything that had to do with the dating show i liked when we got to see fizzy interact with the other guys and go on these other dates i like how connor was depicted in the story because he is shown to be a really loving and supportive father and he has a great co-parenting relationship with his ex-wife and i love to see it and then there was a scene at the end that really saved this because i almost rated this two stars but because of that scene at the end that just melted my heart I bumped my rating up to three stars but other than that i thought fizzy as a main character was so annoying she didn't read as somebody that was like in their early to mid 30s she read like a horny teenager because all she talked about was how much she wanted to have sex with connor she talked about how big his stuff was all the time and it just didn't feel like she was really that interested in him and then i also didn't really like how fast they were having these feelings for each other because it just didn't feel like they spent that much time to have the type of feelings that they were claiming that they had for each other. So I just wasn't on board with that and I didn't really care about their relationship at all except for that scene at the end. So like I said, I did rate this one three stars. So then we have Watching You by Lisa Jewell. This is my second book by this author and this one was actually recommended to me. And this is a adult mystery. So at the start of this, we find out that someone has been murdered in their kitchen. We don't know who it is. We don't know anything about this person, but you find that out on page like one and two. So then the rest of the story is us in this neighborhood getting to know a lot of these neighbors and like their backstories and how they're all like connected to each other and we're getting all of this information and it's all leading up to the day this unknown person was murdered i gave this three stars i thought it was fine it took me a minute to get into this because it was so slow with trying to like introduce all of these characters and there are a lot and it just wasn't moving as fast as i wanted it to move when it did start to move, which was probably around like the middle of the book, I was more invested. Once we got through all the character introductions and how they were all connected to each other and we started really getting into the mystery of what the heck happened to this unknown dead person, I was more on board with the story. I liked how everything eventually came together. I liked that this also included some police interviews because you can already tell at the beginning of the book that they were stuck on one person that they believed had murdered this unknown person in the kitchen. And so throughout the story, you're starting to see, well, maybe it wasn't who they think it is. But what I didn't really like is I didn't really care for a lot of the characters. Like I said, in the beginning, it was moving really slow, which I almost DNF'd it at one point, but I am happy that I stuck with it because it, it was okay. But then I was also not that shocked by the twist. I think at a certain point, you can kind of figure out who did it. But let me just say, I can understand why they did it. But overall, I just thought this was fine. Out of the two Lisa Jewel books that I have read, this is obviously my least favorite. But yeah, I gave it three stars. So then we have Age of Vice by Deep T. Kapoor. This is another literary fiction with also a bit of mystery thrown in there. So at the start of this, in the first few pages, we learned that there was a horrific accident. Somebody was driving a Mercedes and they ended up killing five people on the road. And we learned who was driving, 
But then this story is separated in different parts to where we are following different characters and how they are related to this accident. So we follow Ajay, who is a servant. We follow Netta, who is a journalist. And then we follow Sunny, who is the son in this like crime family over in India. And so in each of their sections of the book we are learning how they are possibly tied to this accident and we learn what actually happened and what led up to this accident occurring i gave this three stars so i really loved ajay's perspective and learning about him and we get his story starting when he was like a child all the way up until like the night of this accident and i just loved reading his backstory seeing how he came to work for sunny and his family who is a really big crime family everyone knows them and so we learn how he got wrapped up with that family i loved his pov and then i loved sunny's pov to a certain extent because some things happened in his pov that i was just not fond of but I love his POV too because I loved how he is a part of this family, but he kind of doesn't want to be and he wants to do things differently, but kind of can't because of who his family is. So I love reading that. Ned's perspective, I don't really think that we needed it. Like you could have took that out of this big old book and we would have just been fine because she shows up in uh, Ajay's POV sections and also Sunny's. So I don't think we needed a whole section for her, but that's neither here or there. I also liked how you kind of got to slowly see how everything tied together. This is a slow book, it's character driven, not really so heavy on the mystery, but I was interested in the mystery because I wanted to know what happened that night. So I just liked how it all slowly came together. So I really did not enjoy the ending of this. It's kind of open-ended and it just left me with so many questions. And I just wonder if it's open-ended because there's gonna be another book, which I don't think it's needed. I also, like I said before, I just didn't really care for Netta's POV chapters. It was just unnecessary and it kind of slowed the story down for me. And then in Sunny's POV chapters, there was this character who literally told their whole life story. I'm not kidding. From the time they were a child all the way up into that moment, we got this random character. Well, they're not random, but we didn't need their whole life story. And it took up like 27 chapters. I kid you not because I kept wondering when it was going to be over. I did not want <laughs> to continue to learn about this character who's not, they're essential to the story, but not really. They're not that important to where we needed their backstory. I, I just was, I'm still confused on why we got that. And it irritated me because this happened like toward the end when I'm ready for this to like wrap up, I'm ready to be done. I did enjoy it for the most part. Like I said, Ajay, I really loved reading about him, but all that other stuff was just not needed and the ending could have been a little better, but three stars. So then I was able to read Out There Screaming. It's edited by Jordan Peele, um, the same guy that made the movie Get Out. And this is a horror anthology. And I was really excited that I was able to get an arc from this from NetGalley because I had never heard about this book until like a couple of months ago. And then when I found out it was going to be released and it was edited by Jordan Peele, I was really excited. But <laughs> I did not enjoy this as much as I was hoping to. Out of the 19 stories that are in here, I only really enjoyed eight of them. There were some in there that I, I, that I thought were fine, but these eight I like really enjoyed. So this book, it to me, it's more like social horror. These stories aren't like super scary or super creepy. Some of them are, but they kind of make you think. A lot of these stories touch on a lot of different things, obviously, but we get some about slavery and um, racism, segregation. I believe there was a story in here that really touched on grief and suicide. So it talks about a lot of different things, but then it throws in a little bit of horror as well. So some of the stories that I did like, I'll just give you the title and then the author and maybe like a little bit of a synopsis. I can't really say much 
about them but like one of them that I enjoyed was Reckless Eyeballing by N.K. Jemison. This one was about a cop who believed that they started seeing eyes on different cars. So that's all I'm gonna give you for that. Another one that I really enjoyed and I thought was kind of funny, but maybe it's not supposed to be funny, <laughs> but it's the other one by Violet Allen. And this one is about this girl who is receiving messages from somebody else that is dating her ex-boyfriend and things happen. And then another one that I liked was A Grief of the Dead by Rion Amlikar Scott. And this one follows this twin who has lost their brother, lost as in their brother passed away. And now he's kind of dealing with the grief and the events that led up to his twin's death. I really like that. And then the other authors that are also included in here are Nana Reed Du, we have Justin Z. Key, we have Aaron E. Adams, uh, Ezra Clayton Daniels, L.D. Lewis. So there's a lot of authors that are included in this work that I have either read from or familiar with and then a lot of authors that I've never heard from but now I'm interested to read more from them. So overall I thought this collection of stories was fine. I just wish I would have enjoyed more of the stories that were included in here. Some of the reasons why I didn't like some of the stories is because the story might have just went over my head and I didn't understand the message that we were trying to get. Some of them were too short. It just felt like it stopped right in the middle of the story or some of them were way too long and it just felt like the story that I already don't understand keeps dragging on page after page after page. But if this, I don't feel like I sold this very well, but if it sounds interesting, I would suggest that you pick it up. It is released on October 3rd. And like I said, I gave it three stars. It was fine for the most part. So then next we have The Whispers by Ashley Ardrain. This is a adult contemporary fiction, again, with like a little bit of a mystery thrown in there. And so this was also one of my most anticipated reads for this year because I really enjoyed her debut novel, The Push. If you have not read it, I suggest that you do. But this one follows a group of mothers in this neighborhood. They all live in the same neighborhood. And at the beginning, they are all at this like neighborhood barbecue. And at the house where the barbecue is being hosted, Whitney has gone upstairs to talk to her son. I believe he's like 10, 11 years old. And everybody outside could hear her screaming and like yelling at this little boy. So she's getting some side eyes. A few days later, I don't know, well, I don't know if it's like a few days later or like a couple of weeks later, there was an incident at the house and Xavier has fallen out of the window and has received some really severe uh, injuries and he has been taken to the hospital. And now there are whispers going on in the neighborhood about what happened to Xavier that would have made him fall out of a window. So I gave this three stars. The beginning of this was really slow for me. It took me a little bit to get into it and to be invested in these different mothers. We're following, I believe like four. But once the story started going, I was more invested into this story. I really loved the conversation around motherhood and everybody, all of the characters that we follow. There are different experiences with motherhood. We have someone that loves being a mother. We have someone who has lost a child. We have someone who's struggling to become a mother. You know, another um, character, she is struggling with trying to actually care for her kids as in she has kids, but she doesn't really even know if she wants them. So we are following people who are all having their own experiences with motherhood. I loved how um, everything came together in the end in regards to what happened to Xavier and the ending of this book was spectacular. There was like one line in here that really saved this book for me as well and it could not have ended on a better note. And so then the issues that I had with this was I've already mentioned it just took me a minute to get into it and then there were just a lot of characters. Not only are we following these four mothers, but then we're also following, we're getting some information about their husbands. And at certain points, it was hard for me to keep track of who went with who, whose child is who, whose husband belongs where. It just took me a minute to wrap my mind around all of that. But once I did, I enjoyed the story 
and gave it three stars. Then last, we have A Twisted Love Story by Samantha Downing. This is my first book by this author. This is a adult mystery thriller, although I wouldn't necessarily say it is thrilling, but we are following our main characters, Wes and Ivy, who have absolutely no business being together. They are the most toxic couple out there. So at the start of the story, they have broken up and it's been a few months since they've been together, but a cop comes and visits Wes and says that he needs to stop stalking Ivy. And he's so confused because he's like, I haven't been stalking her, but okay. So that is how Ivy has been brought back into his life. So they start talking again, they get together again, they start being petty with each other again. But the cop that came to visit Wes has started digging into their like history and has found out that they have filed police reports on each other in the past and she realizes that they might be connected to a death that took place years before so we're following Wes and Ivy as they are in a relationship that they should not be in and this cop who is looking into them and seeing how they're tied to this possible death I gave this four stars I really had a fun time with this a lot of people who have rated this lore have said that they did not like the relationship between Wes and Ivy and for it to be as toxic as this author wanted it to be. Everything that they did to each other was very childish, which that was the thing that I liked. These are grown adults and they're acting like two teenagers who want to, you know, like one up each other and want to get back at each other and just doing stupid stuff to irritate the other person. Yet, anytime they break up, they find themselves trying to do something to get the other one back that is just dumb. And I actually had a fun time with it. I was entertained with their petty relationship. I was not really a fan of like the, the side plot of this mystery and this death that they should have been tied to. Um, that was like slow moving and getting like information about that and what actually happened. And then the ending of the story was a bit chaotic for me. And I think that's where like the thrilling part of this was supposed to be. But I could have done without all of that and just had a story about Wes and Ivy in this messed up love story. So I gave it four stars. I enjoyed it. I don't think that a lot of people are probably going to like this because of their relationship. But if it sounds good, pick it up because I had a fun time with it. So that is all that I have for you guys. And I will see you guys next time. Bye.